Uh, I'm Bill Skeltema. I'm a, from Muskegon, Michigan, and I built this Mustang. Uh, I hate to admit to this, but it took me 20 years because I made a lot of changes on it. We uh, we ran champions from Sun and Fun this past April, and this is a photo draft. We did a photo shoot of the airplane in flight. The airplane is painted red and white with some black trim, as you can see, but the eye-catching thing here is the Pegasus. I can uh, take credit for the whole paint job and the paint scheme, but I could not take credit for this. All I did is help them hold the decals and stuff that we laid the outline on first. One thing here, when we push the rudder left or right, you notice we stay in line. We decided to make sure when we put the paint on here that we're crossing these perpendicular, and that has really worked out nice. For power here in this particular airplane, I have an O360, which is a non-fuel injected engine. Normally they come with a mag, which runs the top plugs and the bottom plugs, but in my case we went to electronic condition on the top plugs, and we have a magneto operating the bottom plugs. We also have cowl flaps on here that are not part of the cowling. They're down here and they stay with the airframe. The uh, air box on this thing here will take air from a filter and it'll take air from the um, heat box and it'll also take ram air. Now that's crucial because the ram air gives you another inch of manifold pressure in the hookup I got which is almost 10 miles an hour at altitudes. Now let's move and go around the side okay. This is the canopy on the airplane. It's a sliding canopy. It goes forward and back. It's very crucial how you build it back here though and in my installation I cleaned it up a whole lot. I don't have any rails showing. I don't have any hooks showing. When the canopy comes forward it slides in under this angle right here and now we're pretty well got leather showing all the way through the airplanes and I have a lock here. I put it in here. This goes over center and it locks real tight. In fact as I had them up there with doing a water test one day and we were pouring water in up there and I'm sitting inside with a towel trying to catch any water and it didn't leak so I told him to stop and then I unlatched it and I pushed the canopy back and got drenched because all the water was still laying up there. Aero TV is brought to you by Cirrus aircraft have always been easy to fly now they're easier than ever to buy a complete line of ownership programs gives you everything you need to purchase, trade, finance, lease, insure, and warranty your Cirrus. There's even an ownership program for non-pilots. The Cirrus Access Pilot can teach you how to fly or fly the plane for you. Find out more at www.cirrusdesign.com. Cirrus, for the love of flying. We got a wood drain panel in here. Now that wood drain is an overlay. We start out with the regular 80 thousandths and the instruments are actually mounted in that and then you take the top overlay and you, uh, I send it out and they did the wood with burrow wood overlay for me both on the switches and the circuit breakers and also on the panel. Over on the right I've got a glove box. I, with the stack and the way I arranged it I was able to have extra space in there. The in interior of the airplane is all leather. They're handmade by me. They slide forward and back about five inches. They also have a reclining back. If I push it here it'll lay all the way back to here but you can't fly that way but the passenger can. In the middle here we have what we call a console that I built and I can store stuff in flight there. When we get in and out of this airplane we don't step on the seats. We step on this right here. This is a hard part for stepping on the on the uh, getting in the airplane seats. Initially the airplane cabin ended right here. And when I rebuilt the, built the airplane, I cut this out, reinforced the corners here to make it effective like a shear web would. One important thing about this baggage door, when I put it in here and decided how big this opening was going to be, I had to be able to crawl out. We're thinking ahead here, if you ever have an engine failure and you land in a plowed field or something, the airplane will probably want to flip over on its back. And if it does that, you cannot get the canopies back. So you can't get out through the canopy. Maybe you're lucky enough and it'll break out. But this is an escape hack, you might say. This is my emergency outlet. The seats throw forward or lay forward, and I can crawl out through here, and even some pretty big guys can. 
And uh, this is an addition that I made that was not in the plans. We can look at the tail here. This is a tailwheel which is lockable. To have a lockable tailwheel it comes back into here and there's a pin here that drops in and that tail wheel is now locked and no matter what happens to the tail it stays locked and you keep going straight down the runway. You put the flap back down because it's actuated by the position of the flaps and put them off it releases the tail wheel and now you can uh, maneuver your airplane and make turns and taxi wherever you want to go. Aero TV is brought to you by Today, there is an affordable, high-performance, easy-to-own, and easy-to-operate, very light jet designed with you in mind. Far less expensive than any other twin-engine jet to buy, it is also the least expensive to own and operate. It is the Eclipse 500, the jet that's easy to buy, easy to fly, and fun to own. The jet for you. I wanted to have an airplane that I could take home and put in my own garage. And in order to do that, I had to be able to fold the wings. I looked at the vans initially and some of the other airplanes out there, but none of them were set up where we could make folding wings out of them. So the purpose is to get away from paying about $200 and more for a hangar or hangar space every month. It, that's where it is. And the other thing is we work or putter with our airplanes and it's very difficult to have to go out to uh, the airplane and work on it in the middle of the winter. Where I have at home I got heat. It's always about 60, 65 degrees or 70. During the summer I got air conditioned. And, uh, my whole shop is air conditioned. So you can't beat that for being able to service the airplane. Well. I have to take the airplane out of the garage and pull it up on a trailer. That's the first step. That takes about 20 minutes and get it on the trailer. We got a hoist here that our battery that runs this hoist here. Over here is a winch and this little control right here like a little garage door controller is all that I need to get the airplane on the trailer. Then I take it to the airport and they let me pull right out on the ramp where the airplanes are with my car in the trailer. Tilt the trailer back up so the airplane will wheel off and I got straps holding it on it of course I got to loosen those and then the airplane is on the tarmac and then I unfold the wings and put them out and all told I probably spend about 30-35 minutes doing that and along with that I do a, a, an inspection double check everything as you go.